So today's video, we're gonna talk about a PCO or a posterior capsule opacification. Now, when you hear posterior capsule opacification, that's kind of confusing. So I'll draw a picture out and make it a little easier to make sense here in a minute. So if you've never had cataract surgery, you do not have to worry about a PCO. But if you have had cataract surgery, this is a very real complication after surgery that your doctor probably spoke to you about. Now, when I talk to patients about a PCO before surgery, I don't really consider it a complication, more of an expectation of something that just happens after surgery. So the numbers range anywhere between about 20 to 50% of patients after cataract surgery will develop a PCO. And it's typically in the first know, two to five years. So some of the risk factors for developing a PCO is if you've had cataract surgery at a younger age, if you have a history of a traumatic cataract, like you got punched in the face or had some accident that caused the cataract, um, if you have a history of diabetes, uveitis, or a couple other uh, more rare conditions like myotonic dystrophy or RP or retinitis pigmentosa. Um, so the symptoms of a PCO have given it a nickname called a secondary cataract. The reason it's called a secondary cataract is because patients will come in complaining of decreased vision, glare, halo, light sensitivity, difficulties reading, the same symptoms they had prior to cataract surgery. And kind of like cataracts, PCOs are typically slow growing, and so the symptoms slowly get worse over time. Now for this next part, I'm gonna draw a couple pictures. Personally, I feel like explaining the anatomy in eye problems always makes the, the condition make more sense. This first circle here represents your cataract. Now, the cataract or lens sits inside of a bag. We call this bag the capsule. To get inside the lens or to take out the cataract during surgery, we make a small hole in the top of this capsule called a capsule rexus, meaning that we're cutting a hole in, this, in, the, in the capsule. Now from there, we'll go in, we take out the cataract with our instruments, and we put in a new lens on the inside of the bag. Now in surgery, we do our best to protect the posterior capsule to make sure that that stays in place because that's what allows the lens to be suspended like this in the eye. Now a PCO is development of opacification on the posterior capsule meaning whitening on the back part of the capsule or the bag. Now the opacification on the back of the capsule can be caused by migration, proliferation, or differentiation of lens epithelial cells. What that means is the cells right here on the anterior capsule can migrate or move from the anterior back around to the posterior. They can also proliferate or grow and they can differentiate into different types of cells. So there's actually two types of PCO. So one's called a fibrous PCO that looks more like a wrinkling like you see right here. And the other is called a pearl PCO. And you can see in this picture because it looks like pearls or sometimes you call it a fish egg appearance. You can imagine why it's trying to see through that is gonna decrease your vision, cause glare, cause halos, cause difficulty reading, all the same symptoms of having a cataract to begin with. However, what's different about this one is it's growing, these cells are growing on the back of the capsule. Now, when I explain what a PCO is to my patients in clinic, I like to think of how a vine grows on a scaffolding. So just like the lens epithelial cells, these vines can migrate or move posterior and they can proliferate or grow up. Now, as these vines grow, centrally or the PCO grows centrally, it creates an opacification in the center axis of your vision. Now, a lot of people have PCOs and they're not visually significant, meaning that the, the, that the vines or the cells haven't grown enough to the middle of their eye to where they don't see the problem. So we may see it as ophthalmologists, we can see the, the pearls or the fibrous tissue growing around, but you may not notice anything, which is completely fine. We just leave it alone and don't worry about it. However, when it grows into the middle of your vision, then it's time to do something about it. Now, before we jump to the risk, let's explain about how the PCO is actually treated. So what we use is called a YAG laser. Now, during the YAG laser procedure, small shots of laser are shot in that posterior capsule. Now, there's different ways of doing it, but ultimately what's going to happen is your, your surgeon will shoot circles or a cross or different patterns in the middle part of that capsule to make it disappear. So back to our vine analogy, if you went out there and cut a hole and the, the trellis or the scaffolding where the, the vines are growing, not only are they not there anymore, but they also can never grow back. So the same thing after this, this YAG procedure. Once these, the laser is shot in that central axis or, or creating that central hole for you to see through again, you never have to worry about it again because what it does is it shoots that posterior capsule and it just falls back. And sometimes it'll kind of curl in on itself and get stuck, or sometimes it just falls in the back of the eye and never becomes an issue. Now the YAG laser procedure is pretty benign. However, there are some risk factors that it's important for you to know about. The most feared and most talked about is a retinal detachment, meaning that the retina becomes separated off the back of the eye. 
This really happens only in about one to two percent of the time. Um, and there's a lot of studies that show anywhere between two to five percent or 0.6 to two and a half percent. But basically, it's kind of a rare complication, but it's very important that you need to know about. A couple of the other complications are macular edema, a damaged lens, having increased floaters, increased eye pressure, having some iris bleeding, corneal edema, IOL subluxation, iritis, macular hole, or loss of corneal endothelial cells. Now, again, your surgeon should discuss all those with you before doing the procedure anyway. I have a PCO, do I have to do something about it? The answer is no. Nobody has ever died from a PCO. Now, if your vision's so bad that you can't see and you get a wreck and then you die, that's a different story, but nobody's ever just died from a PCO. So the answer is no, it's not, there's no rush to it. It didn't happen overnight and it doesn't have to be fixed right now. Um, but most patients, when you explain to them that the, their decrease in vision is from the PCO and that there's this procedure that takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple minutes to, to perform, and you walk out, most people walk out seeing, you know, the, the vision like they did right after cataract surgery, they go for it. Two, you said you're using lasers. Is that dangerous? Well, most of the time it's not. However, there are a couple of the complications, uh, which we talked about earlier. So again, have that discussion with your doctor. Three, what happens afterwards? Great question. So in our practice, we typically have you wait about 30 minutes after the procedure and we check your pressure again. If things are good, you go home and we see you back in a week. Now, your doctor may do something different. But that's just what we do. Four, will I see perfect immediately afterwards? Uh, no, not really. Well, some people do. Some people see 20-20 immediately afterwards or whatever their best potential is, they see right after the procedure and they're just freaking out and they're happy. Um, but oftentimes, because we're shooting lasers, you'll see a bright flashing light and that you're kind of like light blinded for, for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Or sometimes after the procedure, you'll see little floaters as we shoot that little scaffolding or that little lens out, it kind of floats around your vision and it takes a couple days for it to really fall down. Gravity just kind of pulls it down and it stays down there. Um, and so you may complain afterwards of, of a little blurry haziness. Again, that doesn't bother any of us. Um, or you may complain that you're seeing a big floater. Again, that's normal. Um, now, if you're seeing tons of flashes of light and tons of floaters and you feel like a curtain vision or a curtain of veil is dropping over vision, those are signs of retinal detachment. That's a different story. But if your doctor says, hey, you might see a floater for a little bit and it might disappear, go for it. That's normal. Question five. So I developed a secondary cataract. Will I ever develop a tertiary cataract? Nope. Those don't exist. Now, what can happen is we can't get all the PCO in one sitting, meaning that uh, for whatever reason, maybe like the view got cloudy and it just became hard to, to see everything. So we maybe got most of it, but it's still hanging on by a strand. Or sometimes if they're really, really dense, we'll put a bunch in. Um, and for fear of putting too much energy, we'll just say, hey, come back later and we'll, we'll try again. Um, but for the most part, most people don't need a secondary laser touch up. Question six, does it hurt? Uh, no, it shouldn't hurt. Um, now some people have told me that they, they feel like a popping sensation because you hear the laser and you think you're, but it's never painful. Um, and even then we always give a numbing drop beforehand and, uh, and then give a, either numbing drop or a little pressure drop afterwards. Uh, I think I maybe had one in the last like 50 or 60 people have said that there's been a little bit of discomfort, but no, it's not, um, it's not the pain you think you're going to get when someone's shooting a laser at your eye. Question number seven, is this fun to do? Absolutely. So as residents, um, even in our first week of training, we're allowed to do these procedures. So um, it's something we look forward to doing, um, not only because it's kind of fun shooting a laser like it's playing a video game to us, um, but it's also fun because patients are almost immediately happy afterwards. And if they're not immediately because of the, the floating um, or kind of the light blindness temporarily, when they come back for that week one, most patients are super happy uh, because you basically cure their cataract or their second cataract with a laser and it took a couple minutes. So yeah, they're, they're pretty fun. Oh, you meant fun for you. Um, I don't know, you just sit there and look at the microscope with lots of bright lights, so. All right, that's it. So you are now an expert. You know what a YAG laser does and how you treat a PCO or a posterior capsule pacification. You can now wow all your friends and bore people at dinner parties, but hopefully you've learned something. And if you've had a YAG or you're going to need a YAG, uh, you feel more comfortable understanding what's going on and why we do it. Thanks for watching the video today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as soon as I get a chance, I'll answer it. Any questions you have should really be directed at your physician or your doctor that's performing the procedure. If you feel like you've learned something, 
please like the video and subscribe to our channel. We're trying to make it grow so we can share ophthalmology knowledge to everybody. If you visit our YouTube channel, The Eye Chiefs, you'll see tons of other educational videos. You'll see some surgery videos. You get to watch a cataract surgery, or you can watch an open globe repair, or you can also watch our wives and our classmates sing to a couple of fun songs.